How often do you think about the cosmic dance happening above us? Our little blue dot is spinning in a vast cosmic sea, teeming with astronomical bodies that have the potential to significantly change our world, as they have done in the past. Today, we venture back to a moment in history when Earth witnessed an extraordinarily mysterious event. An event powerful enough to level forests, but curiously left no trace of an impact. Welcome to our journey into the mystery of the Tunguska event. Let's set the scene for the Tunguska event a little more. We're in Siberia. It's the early 20th century, June 30th, 1908 to be precise. Life is comparatively simpler. No internet, no TV. The tranquility of the Siberian wilderness is suddenly shattered by a blast. This is not your regular explosion. It's an event of cosmic proportions now known as the Tunguska event. Named after the Tunguska River, the event is also sometimes referred to as the Tunguska Explosion or Tunguska Blast. Now, why these names? The event took place near the Tunguska River in what is now Krasnoyarsk Krai, Russia, and the blast was so powerful that it was heard hundreds of kilometers away. What we are talking about is an explosion estimated to have the energy of 10 to 15 megatons of TNT. That's a figure that's hard to wrap your mind around, so let's put it into perspective. That's more than 1,000 times the power of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima during World War II. It's roughly equal to Castle Bravo, the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated by the United States. The explosion released enough energy to flatten 80 million trees over an area of 2,000 square kilometers. Eyewitnesses reported seeing a fireball as bright as the sun streaking across the sky. This was followed by a series of shocks that knocked people off their feet and broke windows hundreds of kilometers away. However, despite this massive explosion, the intriguing part of this event is the absence of an impact crater. No evidence of a meteorite, comet, or any other extraterrestrial body was found at the explosion site. This mystery led to many theories about what caused the Tunguska event, a mystery that we'll delve into as we explore further. Now, when we think about an extraterrestrial object like a meteorite or a comet colliding with Earth, we imagine a huge circular crater, just like the one created by the meteorite that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs. However, what makes the Tunguska event so peculiar is the complete absence of any such impact crater. Imagine the confusion when scientists led by Russian mineralogist Leonid Kulik first arrived at the epicenter of the event in 1927, almost two decades later. They found an eerily desolate landscape where trees were scorched and laid flat in a radial pattern away from the center, but no telltale crater in sight. This absence was not just a missing piece of the puzzle. It was as if the entire puzzle had been flipped upside down. How can an explosion, equivalent to 15 megatons of TNT, leave no trace of its origin? The absence of the crater led to a whirlwind of speculation and theories. The most widely accepted explanation among scientists is that an extraterrestrial object, likely a comet or meteorite around 50, 190 meters in size, exploded in the atmosphere 5 to 10 kilometers above Earth's surface. The resulting shock wave was powerful enough to devastate the landscape below, but the high altitude explosion meant that the object vaporized in the atmosphere, leaving no crater on the ground. But that's not where the mystery ends. The absence of the crater also sparked more fringe theories, such as a black hole passing through Earth or an antimatter explosion. Some even speculated that it might have been an alien spaceship that crashed and exploded. While these theories make for intriguing stories, the majority of the scientific community supports the comet or meteorite theory. But with no definitive physical evidence, the Tunguska event remains one of the most tantalizing mysteries of the last century. The strange circumstances surrounding the Tunguska event have fueled a multitude of theories, each attempting to explain the phenomena observed at the site. But two theories have gained the most traction among the scientific community, the meteorite and the comet hypotheses, starting with the meteorite theory. Meteorites are essentially pieces of rock or metal originating from asteroids, which have survived their fiery journey through the Earth's atmosphere to crash land on our planet. This theory was one of the first considered by Leonid Kulik's expedition team. They expected to find a significant amount of iron, a common constituent in meteorites, scattered across the devastated area. However, no substantial meteoric residue or iron was ever discovered at the site, which cast doubt on the meteorite theory. The second theory proposes that the Tunguska event was caused by a comet. Comets are made up of a mixture of water ice, frozen gases, rock, 
and dust formed in the cold outer regions of our solar system. When a comet gets close to the sun, the heat causes the ices to vaporize, creating a glowing coma and sometimes a tail. Comets are less dense than meteorites and would more likely disintegrate upon entering the Earth's atmosphere. This theory aligns with the lack of an impact crater and the limited physical evidence at the site. Some scientists postulate that the object was a fragment of Comet Enker, a well-known short-period comet that orbits the Sun about every 3.3 years. Interestingly, the comet theory also accounts for the reports of night glows observed in the skies of Europe and Western Russia for several nights after the event. The glow was so bright that people could read in the night without any other source of light. This phenomenon could have been the result of dust and ice particles from the exploded comet scattering sunlight in the upper atmosphere. Although the comet theory seems to fit the evidence more snugly, Neither theory can be confirmed with absolute certainty due to the absence of definitive physical evidence. This lack of certainty keeps the Tunguska event a fascinating and as yet unsolved mystery in our planet's history. The comet theory has taken a center stage in the narrative of the Tunguska event, offering intriguing possibilities that align with the observed phenomena. A comet, unlike a meteorite, is a loosely packed snowball of ice and rock, typically originating from the distant, chilly reaches of the Kuiper Belt and Oort Cloud. As these icy bodies approach the Sun on their elliptical orbits, they heat up and release gases, creating a glowing coma or envelope around the comet's nucleus and often a tail that always points away from the Sun due to solar radiation pressure. The unique properties of a comet make it a suitable candidate for the Tunguska event. For one, a comet's fragile composition allows for the possibility that it could explode in the atmosphere before ever making contact with the Earth's surface. This would certainly explain the absence of an impact crater at the Tunguska site, which has long puzzled investigators. Secondly, if a comet were indeed the culprit, it would have been made largely of ice. Upon explosion, this ice would have instantly vaporized, leaving little to no residue behind another puzzle piece fitting neatly with the lack of extraterrestrial material found in the region. Some scientists argue that the Tunguska object may have been a piece of Comet Enka, which is known for producing bright fireballs. However, this remains speculative due to a lack of definitive evidence. What is more, although Comet Enka's orbit intersects Earth's orbit, the comet itself was nowhere near Earth at the time of the Tunguska event leading some researchers to suggest that the object could have been a stray fragment from the comet's previous pass. Furthermore, the peculiar phenomena of night glows, where the night skies were aglow for several days following the Tunguska event, could be explained by the comet theory. The massive explosion could have left a substantial amount of comet dust in the upper atmosphere, which would scatter sunlight and create a diffuse glow. While the comet theory offers a compelling narrative fitting many of the event's peculiarities, it isn't without its critics. Some point out the lack of water in the soil and tree samples from the Tunguska site. A surprising omission if a water-rich comet was the cause. The Tunguska event wasn't just about an explosion, as staggering as it was, it was also about the bizarre and unexplained phenomena that followed, intriguing and baffling researchers for years to come. The sheer scale of the event, with an estimated force of 10, 15 megatons of TNT, is just one aspect of the mystery. It's the peculiarities, the oddities that don't fit neatly into our understanding, that make the Tunguska event such a fascinating subject. One such anomaly is the so-called Tunguska lights. For several nights after the explosion, night skies glowed brightly enough across Europe and Western Russia for people to read by. Newspapers from the period reported the phenomenon, with one describing how people could read in the street as if it were day. This atmospheric effect, often called night glows, is thought to have been caused by fine dust ejected into the high atmosphere by the blast, which then scattered sunlight. This is similar to what we see after particularly vibrant volcanic eruptions. Another intriguing phenomenon was the impact the event had on the Earth's magnetic field. Shortly after the explosion, magnetic and meteorological observatories around the world recorded a perturbation in the Earth's magnetic field known as a magnetic storm. It was as if the Tunguska event had sent a shockwave through the planet's geomagnetic field. Why a supposed airburst event would cause such a disturbance is still a subject of research and debate. Scientists studying the event found that trees at the center of the explosion began to grow more rapidly than their counterparts outside the zone. This 
telegraphing effect, where environmental changes are reflected in tree growth rings, suggests the explosion may have somehow altered the local environment in a way that promoted tree growth. Perhaps one of the most enduring mysteries of the Tunguska event is the lack of a definitive impact site or remnant of the cosmic body that caused the event. Despite numerous expeditions and studies of the area, no impact crater or significant meteorite fragments have ever been definitively identified. This has led to the suggestion that the object exploded in the air, a theory supported by the butterfly-shaped pattern of tree falls at the site. Each of these unusual phenomena add layers to the mystery that is the Tunguska event. They make us question, explore and challenge our understanding, driving our curiosity and the pursuit of knowledge. And while we may never have all the answers, the journey of discovery is in itself a testament to our innate desire to comprehend the universe. Airports are fascinating places, aren't they? Hubs of global connection where millions of people pass through each year, taking off and landing from all corners of the world. They're places of excitement, anticipation and sometimes even a little anxiety. But what about when these bustling hubs fall silent? Today, we're embarking on a journey to the world's most mysteriously abandoned airports, each one a monument to the wax and wane of human ambition and a stark testimony to how quickly things can change. From Cyprus to Spain, Germany to the United States, these vast, eerily quiet spaces whisper stories of optimism, economy, war and political power plays. So fasten your seatbelts as we prepare for departure into the realm of the abandoned, the desolate, the forgotten. Orbiting back to our first locale, let's delve deeper into the ghost airport of Cyprus, the Nicosia International Airport. Opening its doors in the 1930s, it was the island's key entry point, offering a warm welcome to millions of tourists and locals alike. But when the Turkish invasion happened in 1974, Nicosia was abruptly abandoned and placed in the buffer zone between the Greek and Turkish parts of Cyprus. Its eerie quietness is amplified by the Cyprus conflict's ongoing tension, rendering the airport an imposing relic of history and a fascinating site of global interest. One of the most captivating aspects of the Nicosia Ghost Airport is the uncanny preservation of its infrastructure. Imagine stepping into a 70s-era movie set, complete with a rusting, trident sunjet abandoned mid-evacuation on the tarmac. Other elements frozen in time include check-in desks, departure boards, and even a dusty, dated, duty-free shop. The UN now maintains the airport, ensuring its quiet preservation, adding an extra layer of mystique to this already fascinating location. Exploring it from afar, one can almost hear the phantom hum of jet engines and the bustle of passengers from decades past. Now let's take a flight of imagination to sunny Spain and to the Ciudad Real Central Airport, an infrastructure leviathan that today echoes with a silence almost as grand as its initial ambitions. Construction of this airport started in 2006, just a year before the global financial crisis hit. It was built with the idea of alleviating pressure from Madrid's busy Barajas airport with an eye-watering cost of over 1 billion euros. A rail link connecting it to Madrid was planned, but never completed. Quite optimistic, right? However, this optimism turned out to be unfounded. What's fascinating about this airport is the grand scale of its construction that sharply contrasts with its subsequent downfall. Despite a sprawling four-kilometer runway that can accommodate the largest airliners, including the massive Airbus A380, the airport shut its doors just a few years after its grand opening in 2008 due to the lack of passenger traffic. The story doesn't end there, though. In 2015, it was auctioned off for a mere 10,000 euros, a dramatic fall from grace for an airport once heralded as a solution to Spain's aviation needs. So why did it fail? Many factors contributed, but one key element was location. Even though it was branded as central, Ciudad Real is located over 200 Quetamonudo from Madrid, not exactly convenient for a city airport. And despite the planned high-speed rail link, the reality was that it was easier and faster for passengers to use Madrid's existing airports. Today, the empty terminal buildings and vacant runways serve as a poignant reminder of the airport that was built on a dream, but sadly, never took flight. But now let's jet off to Germany and land at Berlin's Tempelhof Airport, a place laden with history and fraught with mystery. Tempelhof was once one of the busiest airports in the world and it's still one of the most iconic. You see, this is not just any abandoned airport, it is a relic of the cold era. 
Tempelhof was originally built in the 1920s but came into prominence under the German regime, which massively expanded the airport as part of the military's ambitious plans to showcase German prowess. The airport's main building with its monumental curved façade was one of the largest structures in the world when it was built, and it remains an imposing sight today. But Tempelhof is perhaps best known for its role in the Berlin Airlift of 1948 to 1949, when Allied forces used the airport to deliver vital supplies to the citizens of West Berlin, who were cut off by a Soviet blockade. Over 200,000 flights were made in and out of Tempelhof during the airlift, providing a literal lifeline to the city. Despite its historical significance, the airport officially closed its doors in 2008. Why? The reasons are many. The airport's central location made expansion impossible. Newer and larger airports were built to accommodate Berlin's growing needs, and the maintenance of such a gigantic structure was deemed financially unviable. Let's continue our journey to the sun-drenched country of Greece, landing at the now silent Elinikon International Airport in Athens. Elinikon once served as the international gateway to Greece and a bustling hub for Olympic Airways, the national carrier. Its fascinating history, however, is now confined to memory. Elinikon has a past dating back to the late 1930s where it began as an airbase. Later, it grew into the primary airport for Athens, seeing millions of travelers throughout its operational lifespan. It was renovated for the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens, with one terminal being transformed into a venue for indoor sports such as basketball and fencing. However, as the 21st century dawned, a more modern and larger facility, Athens International Airport, was developed to meet the growing demands of international travel. This led to Elinikon's closure in 2001, just over six decades after its opening. In our ongoing journey through the world's mysteriously abandoned airports, we now land in Spain, home of the adventurous Don Quixote. Only this time it's not a knight errant we're exploring, but an airport that shares his name. Don Quixote Airport, also known as Ciudad Real Central Airport. Planned as Spain's first private international airport, the idea was grand. A major air hub located in the region of Castilla-La Mancha, known primarily for its windmills and Don Quixote's imaginary giants. With a runway long enough to accommodate the world's largest passenger airliner, the Airbus A380, the ambitions for this airport were sky-high. Unfortunately, the reality was a stark contrast to the dreams that initiated its construction. Opening in 2008 just as the world was hit by a financial crisis and coupled with its location, which was far from major cities and lacked sufficient public interest, the airport struggled to attract both airlines and passengers. A mere three years after its opening, the airport ceased operations. Next on our journey through the world's mysteriously abandoned airports, we travel across the Atlantic to Denver, Colorado to explore the story of Stapleton Airport. Once bustling with activity, this airport now exists only in the memories of those who once frequented it. Stapleton Airport was Denver's primary airport from 1929 to 1995, growing over the years from a modest municipal airport into a major transportation hub. It saw the transformation of aviation history, from propeller-driven aircraft to jets, from the dawn of commercial aviation to its coming of age. Its strategic location made it an important stop for coast-to-coast -coast flights, and at its peak it was one of the busiest airports in the US. The airport was witness to a period of tremendous growth, becoming the main hub for Continental Airlines and later serving as a significant operation base for United Airlines. But as air travel increased, Stapleton Airport's limitations began to show. Its runway layout and landlocked location prevented further expansion and led to noise pollution concerns. As the 21st century approached, it became clear that a larger, more modern airport was needed, and so Denver International Airport was born. With its opening in 1995, Stapleton Airport was shut down. Today, the land where Stapleton Airport once stood has been transformed into a bustling urban development, featuring residential housing, parks, and commercial buildings. While most of the airport's infrastructure has been demolished and replaced, a few remnants remain, including the old control tower that now serves as part of a restaurant. From the sprawling metropolis of Denver, we venture into the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean for our next destination, the isolated Johnston Atoll Airport. 
This small and remote airfield, located on one of the Johnston Atoll's four islands, embodies a haunting allure, and a story intertwined with some of the most ominous chapters in human history. Johnston Atoll Airport, a single runway stretching across Johnston Island, is nearly 1,300 miles southwest of Honolulu, Hawaii. The atoll was claimed by the U.S. under the Guano Islands Act of 1856, a law that allowed the U.S. to claim uninhabited islands containing guano deposits. Though no significant guano was found, the atoll soon found a purpose. During World War II, the Johnston Atoll became a critical air and naval base, and the airport was constructed. Post-war, it became even more essential, albeit for more controversial reasons. The airport and its surroundings were transformed into the Johnston Atoll Chemical Agent Disposal System, Jacquards, the first facility of its kind built by the US to incinerate chemical weapons. For over three decades, the atoll was a storage and disposal site for chemical munitions, including Agent Orange. The last disposal operation happened in 2000, and the airport was abandoned in 2005, with control of the atoll given to the US Fish and Wildlife Service. Today, the island is a national wildlife refuge, and the abandoned airport and its buildings are strictly off-limits. The structures have been left to decay, a ghostly reminder of the atoll's contentious past. Next, we journey to a place where the turmoil of geopolitical conflicts has left an indelible mark, the Gaza International Airport in Palestine. Gaza International Airport, also known as Yasser Arafat International Airport, once stood as a symbol of Palestinian autonomy. Inaugurated in 1998 by Yasser Arafat himself, the airport, with its bright and modern design, was built with the hope of fostering economic growth and connecting the isolated Gaza Strip with the rest of the world. The single runway stretching 3,050 meters was capable of handling 700,000 passengers per year, but this shining beacon of optimism would not last long. Barely two years after its inauguration, the airport became a casualty of the Second Intifada, a period of intensified Israeli-Palestinian conflict that started in late 2000. Israeli forces bulldozed the airport's radar station and control tower, leaving the runway pockmarked with craters to prevent its use. Despite attempts to renovate the airport over the years today, it stands abandoned. The runway remains scarred, and the once bustling terminal building is a shell of its former self, serving as a stark reminder of the region's ongoing conflict and the airport's former glory. Now let's transport ourselves to Canada, where we find another abandoned hub of aviation history, the Mirabel International Airport. This airport story is one of ambitious goals unfulfilled, resulting in a spectacularly vast and strikingly quiet expanse. Mirabel International Airport, located in Montreal, was once destined to be one of the biggest airports in the world. In the late 1960s, Montreal was experiencing a boom in air travel, leading city planners to conceive of an airport that would handle this growth and set Montreal on the global stage. They set aside an enormous 398 square kilometers, an area larger than the entire city of Montreal for its development. Mirabel opened in 1975 amidst great fanfare. It was state-of-the-art, boasting the world's largest air terminal at the time, and it was expected to handle 60 million passengers annually by the year 2000. But Mirabel's grand ambitions never took flight. Its distance from downtown Montreal and the lack of efficient public transportation made it less appealing than its conveniently located predecessor, the Dorval Airport, now known as Montreal Pierre Elliott Trudeau International Airport. Additionally, the anticipated explosion in air travel over Montreal never materialized to the expected levels. Over time, airlines began pulling out favoring the Dorval Airport, and by 2004, Mirabel had ceased passenger operations altogether. Today, Mirabel's massive terminal lies abandoned and largely demolished, its futuristic design now a relic of the past. However, the airport does continue to serve as a cargo airport and houses an aircraft assembly plant, but the grand visions of it bustling with international passengers remain a distant dream lost to history. Finally, we venture back to Spain, this time to the eastern coast and the curious case of the Castellón Costa Azahar Airport. Now this, this is a story of misplaced optimism and grandiose dreams that left an airport standing desolate. Construction for the Castellón Costa Azahar Airport started in 2004. Carlos Fabra, the local political leader and driving force behind the project, 
envisioned the airport as a hub for tourists and to boost the economy of the Castellón province. The airport was built at a cost of around 150 million euros, complete with modern facilities, a long runway and even a 24-meter tall statue of Fabra himself welcoming visitors. Everything was seemingly set for takeoff. However, the airport's opening in 2011 coincided with Spain's crippling economic crisis. The timing couldn't have been worse. No airlines had agreed to operate out of the airport, leaving the brand new infrastructure deserted and silent. For over four years, not a single commercial flight took off or landed at Castellón Costa Azaha. The airport quickly became a symbol of Spain's ghost airports and the country's reckless spending ahead of the economic downturn. It also didn't help that Carlos Fabra was later convicted on tax fraud charges. In the shadows of civilization's progression, we often find beautiful relics of a forgotten era, intriguing, haunting and frozen in time. Today we journey into the world of hotels, but not just any hotels. These architectural marvels, once bustling with life, now echo only with the silence of abandonment. From the bustling heart of Chicago to the isolated extremes of North Korea, Join me as we delve into the fascinating stories of the Mark Twain Hotel, the Ryugyong Hotel, the Grand Hotel de l'Europe and the Coco Palms Resort. So why do these monuments to hospitality and luxury end up forgotten? Our first stop, the Bristol Hotel in Vienna, was not just a hotel but a page from a storybook of a time long gone. Named after the British town of Bristol, the hotel was opened in 1892 right next to the Vienna State Opera providing it with a prime location that attracted the cream of society. The Bristol was designed in the style of the Ringstrasse era, blending elements of Italian Renaissance with subtle Art Nouveau influences. Its elegance and opulence reflected the prosperity of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It became a gathering place for the aristocracy, famous artists and international guests looking to immerse themselves in Vienna's rich culture. Famous personalities like Theodore Roosevelt and Herbert Hoover, as well as artists like Orson Welles, called the Bristol their home away from home while in Vienna. However, the Bristol's prominence waned with the hardships of the 20th century. During the Second World War, the hotel was commandeered by the German army and transformed into a war room. When the war ended, the Bristol fell into disuse, its grandeur giving way to emptiness and silence. Despite several attempts at restoration, the hotel was eventually abandoned. Its once opulent halls and luxurious rooms are now filled with dust, a stark contrast to the grandeur of its past. The Bristol stands as a monument to a bygone era, its silent, vacant halls resonating with the echoes of its rich history. Even in its abandoned state, the hotel continues to captivate onlookers with its fading elegance, standing as a symbol of a time that has long passed. From Europe, we hop across the Atlantic to the city of Chicago. The Mark Twain Hotel, once an emblem of the Roaring Twenties, now stands as a haunting echo of the past. Nestled in the heart of the Windy City, the Mark Twain Hotel opened its doors in the year 1930, named after the famous American author Mark Twain, embodying the charm and wit associated with his name. The Mark Twain was a hotel that reflected the vibrant optimism of the Jazz Age. It attracted a diverse clientele, from tourists and artists to business tycoons, all drawn by the lure of the vibrant city. The hotel was a spectacle in its prime, boasting of an architectural style that beautifully married Art Deco and Beaux-Arts elements. But with the Great Depression, the fortunes of the Mark Twain Hotel plummeted. What was once a hive of excitement and merriment slowly transformed into a desolate symbol of decay. The hotel was further ravaged by time and neglect, with failed restoration attempts contributing to its deterioration. In its later years, the Mark Twain Hotel saw a temporary revival as a budget inn for transient occupants. But it was eventually abandoned, its once buzzing halls echoing with the eerie silence of neglect. Today, it stands as a monument to a golden era long past, its grandeur lost to time. Its imposing facade continues to catch the eye of passers-by compelling them to imagine the opulence that once was. Despite the peeling paint and the eerie quiet, the Mark Twain Hotel holds onto its sense of faded elegance and charm, reminding us of the transience of material success. We now leap across continents to find ourselves in the heart of Pyongyang, North Korea, where the foreboding silhouette of the Rugyong Hotel looms over the cityscape, 
The hotel holds the dubious distinction of being the tallest unoccupied building in the world and is perhaps one of the most controversial examples of abandoned architecture. The Ryugyong Hotel, also known as the Hotel of Doom, was intended to be a symbol of North Korea's ambition and might. Construction began in 1987, with the government envisioning it as a structure that would dwarf any other on the planet. The hotel's design is futuristic, even by today's standards, with its sharp, pyramid-like shape lending it a distinct and iconic look. But economic struggles and construction problems plagued the project from its inception. By 1992, the construction came to a standstill due to the economic crisis following the dissolution of the Soviet Union. The Hotel of Doom thus stood incomplete, an empty shell towering over the North Korean capital. Several attempts were made to restart construction. In 2008, a glimmer of hope emerged as a deal was struck with an Egyptian company to complete the exterior, which indeed was finished in 2011. However, the interior of the hotel remained barren and unfinished, and the construction eventually came to a halt once again. Today, the Ryugyong Hotel stands as a bizarre sight in Pyongyang's skyline, a towering reminder of grand ambitions gone awry. Its abandoned status has sparked curiosity and speculation worldwide, becoming a subject of interest for many urban explorers and history buffs. Despite its gloomy history and uncertain future, the Ryugyong Hotel, with its unusual pyramid shape, is an inescapable part of Pyongyang's identity and a fascinating study of ambition, economics and architecture. In the middle of our list of fascinating exploration of abandoned hotels is the Grand Hotel in Kupari, Croatia. Sitting on the beautiful Adriatic coastline, Kupari was once a prime tourist destination in the former Yugoslavia with the Grand Hotel being its crown jewel. The Grand Hotel was built in the 1920s to accommodate the influx of tourists in the area. With its pristine private beaches and luxurious accommodations, the Grand Hotel was a favorite among wealthy tourists and even played host to military officials and their families during the Yugoslav era. However, as the Yugoslav wars ignited in the 1990s, Kupari and the Grand Hotel found themselves in the crossfire. The area was heavily bombarded and the hotel, along with other buildings in the resort town, were significantly damaged. After the war, the once bustling hotel and resort were left in ruins and gradually succumbed to nature. Today, the remains of the Grand Hotel stand as a haunting testament to a bygone era of prosperity and a stark reminder of the devastating impact of war. Its derelict structures and overgrown surroundings make for an eerie sight, contrasting starkly with the idyllic Adriatic backdrop. Various attempts to restore the area to its former glory have been made, but so far none have been successful. The ghosts of the Grand Hotel still linger in the dilapidated structure, adding to the growing list of the world's fascinating abandoned hotels that have each succumbed to their unique circumstances. To continue our journey, we'll step onto the soils of Mineral Wells, Texas, to visit the remnants of the Baker Hotel, a structure brimming with spectral charm and echoes of the past. The Baker Hotel broke ground in 1926 and officially opened its doors in 1929. Designed in a Spanish colonial revival style, this towering 14-story building was deemed the first skyscraper outside a major metropolitan area. At the time of its grand opening, it was among the most glamorous hotels in the United States, boasting features such as an Olympic-sized swimming pool, a luxurious spa and a roof garden. Notable guests included personalities like Judy Garland, Clark Gable and even infamous outlaws Bonnie and Clyde. The Baker Hotel was also renowned for its mineral water treatments, which were believed to have healing properties. People from all over the country would flock to Mineral Wells, fondly referred to as the South's greatest health resort, for these rejuvenating treatments. However, the Great Depression and the eventual decline of the popularity of mineral baths led to a decrease in patronage. The Baker Hotel closed its doors in 1972, and it has remained abandoned ever since. Today, the skeleton of the Baker Hotel still stands tall in mineral wells, a ghostly testament to its former grandeur. It is a subject of urban exploration and ghost hunting, with rumors of ghost sightings and strange occurrences within its decaying walls. Despite its present state, plans have been announced for its renovation, with hopes of restoring the Baker Hotel to its former glory. But as of now, it stands as a symbol of a past era, 
adding to our list of captivating yet abandoned hotels around the world. Once hailed as the Waldorf in the Catskills, Grossinger's Resort in New York's Catskill Mountains is today a haunting echo of its past. During its heyday in the 1950s and 60s, it was the epitome of the Borscht Belt resorts, serving as a popular vacation spot for New York City's Jewish community. The resort boasted its own post office, private airstrip, and even a ski slope. Grossinger's was the first in the country to use artificial snow on their ski slopes. In the 1950s, the resort's guest list was a who's who of American society and culture, attracting celebrities like Elizabeth Taylor and Jackie Robinson, and comedians such as Jerry Lewis and Milton Berle. Perhaps its most notable claim to fame is that it was the inspiration for Kellerman's resort in the iconic 1987 movie Dirty Dancing. However, Grossinger's couldn't keep up with changing vacation trends. As air travel became more accessible, people started opting for more distant and exotic vacation spots. The Borscht Belt hotels fell out of favor, and Grossinger's was no exception. After struggling for years, the resort was closed for good in 1986. Today, the once vibrant resort is a haunting picture of decay and abandonment. The vast property is filled with dilapidated buildings, overgrown vegetation and graffiti-covered walls. The resort's grand indoor swimming pool, which once echoed with joyful laughter and splashing, now sits empty, its massive arched windows broken or boarded up. Despite several plans for redevelopment over the years, Grossinger's still remains untouched, its ruins standing as a haunting testament to a bygone era of American history. The desolate, overgrown landscape offers an eerie but captivating exploration into a past world of leisure and luxury, now overtaken by the relentless march of time and nature. As we exit these echoes of grandeur, we're left with a palpable sense of intrigue. The Ryugyong Hotel's skeletal figure looms over Pyongyang. The Coco Palms Resort bears silent witness to the natural fury of hurricanes. The Grand Hotel de l'Europe hides within its ghostly rooms the imprint of the Great War, and the Mark Twain Hotel whispers tales of a bustling Chicago past. These structures, now vacant and lifeless, were once bustling establishments echoing with the sounds of celebration, business and the ebb and flow of daily life. Imagine a ship once robust and filled with life, now drifting aimlessly, uninhabited and silent through the vast icy expanses of the North Atlantic or resting in an eternal slumber on a foreign shoreline. The image is unsettling, isn't it? It's a stark reminder of our mortality and the inevitable march of time. Today we delve into the eerie world of abandoned ships, ghostly giants of the sea whose stories continue to captivate and mystify us. Welcome to a voyage into the unknown as we explore the chilling tales of the MV Lubov Orlova and the SS American Star. Have you ever thought about the life of a ship after it's decommissioned? Well, some vessels lead a pretty interesting afterlife, like the MV Lubov Orlova. This colossal 300-foot cruise ship, named after the famous Soviet actress Lubov Petrovna Orlova, was built in Yugoslavia in 1976. It was a magnificent vessel designed to explore the polar regions. But as we're about to see, the ice-cold seas would ultimately become its chilling resting place. The Lyubov Orlova was seized in 2010 in Newfoundland, Canada, due to a debt dispute. After being docked for two years, it was sold to a Dominican buyer for scrap in 2012. However, while being towed to the Dominican Republic, the tow line snapped in heavy seas, and the ship began drifting eastward into international waters. From then, the Lyubov Orlova became known as the Ghost Ship of the Arctic, Despite repeated attempts to secure the ship, it proved elusive. Powered only by currents and winds, this ghost ship roamed the seas, its exact whereabouts often unknown. There were rumors and reports suggesting that the ship may have finally sunk, but without firm evidence, its fate remained a maritime mystery. As for exploration, it's not just about the thrill of discovery. Safety is paramount, and the Lyubov Orlova, abandoned for years and battered by the elements, presented too many risks. Its interior spaces would have deteriorated significantly, and structural integrity would be questionable at best. There's also the consideration of legal rights to a vessel adrift in international waters. Besides, there's a much creepier aspect to consider. The ship was rumored to be infested with cannibal rats. Yes, you heard that right. Left without a food source, the rats aboard would have turned to cannibalism. It's a frightening thought, a ship full of potentially diseased cannibal rats roaming the high seas, 
despite the creepy fascination and mystery surrounding it, the MV Lyubov Orlova remains a chilling reminder of the unpredictable forces of nature and the ghostly afterlife that some ships can lead once they've outlived their intended purpose. We may never know what really happened to it and maybe that's for the best. After all, who's ready to tackle a potential rat-infested ghost ship? If you thought that was it for the Lyubov Orlova, well, the plot thickens, my friends. After disappearing into the fog, the fate of this ghost ship was a mystery that stirred up the imagination of many and resulted in several chilling theories and reported sightings. In January 2013, the ship was spotted 250 nautical miles off the coast of Ireland by the Atlantic Hawk, an offshore supply ship under contract to Husky Energy. The crew managed to secure it with a tow line, but authorities soon ordered them to release it, citing the lack of danger to offshore oil installations or shipping traffic. So, once again, the Lyubov Orlova was left to drift aimlessly. Rumors started to circulate about its location. Sightings were reported, though unconfirmed, some as far off as the coasts of Scotland and Norway. People began to speculate about it reaching the shores of Ireland or the United Kingdom, fueled by satellite images in 2013 suggesting a large object was drifting towards the UK. One of the most chilling theories was that the ship, adrift and abandoned, could be on a collision course with the oil rigs in the North Sea. Can you imagine an unmanned, dilapidated ship of this size causing a catastrophe on an oil rig? A true maritime horror story. And then there were those cannibal rats. The thought of a ship teeming with such desperate creatures stirred the imagination and was stuff for nightmares, let alone the disease threat they could potentially carry if the ship ever made landfall. As for exploration, despite the allure of a ghost ship shrouded in mystery, it remained unexplored due to the considerable risks involved. Its structural instability, unpredictable location, and the potential rat infestation made it a less than desirable candidate for a safe exploration. But here's where the story takes an eerie turn. The Lyubov Orlova suddenly stopped transmitting its location signal in March 2013. From that point on, it vanished without a trace. Many experts now believe that it probably sank, put to rest in the deep, dark depths of the Atlantic Ocean. But without concrete proof, the true fate of this ghost ship remains as elusive as its last known journey. The MV Lyubov Orlova's story serves as a haunting reminder of what happens when man-made structures are left to the mercy of nature's elements, evolving from a symbol of human achievement to a phantom adrift in the vastness of the ocean, its tail etched in the annals of maritime law. Imagine a ship, an ocean liner no less, one that once gleamed with the promise of opulence and grand voyages, now reduced to a skeletal wreckage. We're taking a leap across the Atlantic, to a beach off the coast of Fuerteventura in the Canary Islands, to find our next shipwreck, the SS American Star. Originally launched in 1939 as SS America, this ship had quite an illustrious career. In its heyday, the SS American Star was a symbol of elegance and a testament to the grand era of ocean liners. But what makes the American Star so captivating is not the voyages it undertook, but rather its final resting place. In 1993, the ship was being towed from Greece to Thailand to be converted into a floating hotel when a thunderstorm severed the tow lines, casting the ship adrift. For 48 hours, it was battered by stormy seas until it ran aground off the west coast of Fuerteventura. The ship, once a beacon of luxury, was left stranded, half-submerged and at the mercy of the elements, slowly disintegrating under the relentless assault of waves and time. What remains today is just a haunting ghost of its former self. It's a sight that's both beautiful and sad, a stark contrast to the picturesque beaches of the Canary Islands. A shipwreck on a beach, well within reach of the shore, might seem like an explorer's dream, right? Not quite. Although the SS American Star is visible from the shore, exploring it is a different ballgame. It's a dangerous endeavor, one filled with unexpected hazards. The ship has been subject to intense coastal erosion. Salt water, waves and wind have worn down its structures, rendering the ship extremely unstable. Over the years, sections of the ship have collapsed, vanishing beneath the waves. By 2007, the ship had broken in two with the stern section completely submerged. What's more, the local currents and the surf are incredibly powerful and unpredictable, posing a serious risk for any who dare to approach the wreckage. Although the site has attracted its fair share of adventurous souls over the years, it's strongly discouraged due to these dangers. 
But the power of the SS American Star story lies not in its exploration, but in its visible decay. It serves as a sobering spectacle, a lesson in the relentless power of nature. From the shore, onlookers can witness the ship's transformation from a once proud ocean liner into a symbol of entropy, its silhouette slowly fading with each passing day. An eerie monument to the passage of time. There's something hauntingly beautiful about the American star. Its decaying remains, jutting out from the surf, paint a poignant picture of a bygone era, etching its ghostly outline onto the canvas of maritime history. But more than that, the ship serves as a tangible reminder of our transience in the face of nature's relentless force. But what happened after the SS American Star ran aground? Did the elements eventually consume the once proud ship? Well, much like the city of Venice, the SS American Star found itself in a battle against time and tide, in a slow, inevitable descent into the sea. After the shipwreck in 1994, the ship became a bizarre tourist attraction, visible from the shores of Fuerteventura. Tourists would flock to the beach to catch a glimpse of the ship's silhouette against the horizon, and more daring adventurers would kayak out to the wreck for a closer look. However, the SS American Star was not just an object of fascination for humans, it also became a haven for various forms of marine life. Coral began to grow on its hull, attracting a variety of fish, and over the years the shipwreck slowly transformed into a makeshift artificial reef. As strange as it might sound, even in its derelict state, the SS American Star found a way to contribute to life. However, the harsh conditions of the Atlantic were relentless. The battering of the waves, the corrosive salt water, the gusty winds, all of these factors began to take their toll on the ship. In 2007, barely a decade after it had run aground, the ship broke in half due to the constant onslaught of the elements, and by 2013, the majority of the ship had sunk beneath the waves, disappearing from the sight of the beachgoers who had been drawn to its eerie beauty. Today, almost nothing of the SS American Star remains visible above water. The once majestic ship is now a hidden underwater relic, visited only by intrepid divers and its non-human inhabitants. Its final resting place serves as a haunting reminder of the ship's once illustrious history and a testament to the relentless power of nature. It's a story that continues to captivate, even as the ship itself fades away, slowly being reclaimed by the sea from which it once emerged. And so, our maritime journey comes to an end. We've navigated the chilling tales of the MV Lyubov Orlova, the ghost ship of the North Atlantic and the SS American Star, whose remains now lie hidden beneath the waves off the coast of Fuerteventura. These hulking vessels, once brimming with life and purpose, now serve as stark reminders of our past and the relentless forces of time and nature. They captivate our imaginations, not just as tales of derelict ships, but as stories of human ambition, triumph, and ultimately, surrender to the elements. As we bid them farewell, these ghostly giants of the sea continue their silent vigil, carrying with them the echoes of bygone eras into the vast, uncharted waters of the future. Have you ever gazed out onto the horizon over the vast expanse of the ocean and wondered what mysteries it might hold? This immense body of water, covering over 70% of our Earth's surface, has been a source of fascination fear and awe since the dawn of humanity. Tales of ghost ships and missing vessels have peppered our history, leaving a trail of questions in their wake. So what happens when a ship embarks on a voyage and simply disappears? Today, we are going to delve into the watery tales of nautical disappearances, journeys that started like any other but ended up etching a permanent question mark on the canvas of maritime history. What if I told you that there exists a ghost ship that has sailed the icy waters of the Arctic Ocean unmanned for over 200 years? The ghost ship Octavius, as it has been famously named, is more than just a nautical myth. It's a haunting tale of a ship, her crew, and their chilling fate. In 1761, the Octavius set sail from England for the Orient. Led by a daring captain eager to find a shorter route to Asia, the ship ventured into the treacherous waters of the Northwest Passage. Now, this was in a time long before any serious attempts were made to navigate the passage and definitely before anyone knew about the disastrous effects of frostbite and hypothermia. The Octavius successfully reached its destination and started its homeward voyage in 1762. But instead of using the typical trade route, the captain decided to gamble on the unpredictable Northwest Passage. 
Winter came early that year, trapping the Octavius and its crew in a deadly icy grip. Now, here's where it gets eerie. The ship was next seen on October 11th, 1775, by the crew of the whaling ship Herald. The Herald's crew boarded the drifting Octavius, and what they found was a frozen world of 18th century seafaring. The ship was still intact, but inside they discovered the entire crew frozen solid, perfectly preserved in the below zero temperatures, with the captain reportedly still at his desk, pen in hand, finishing a log entry dated 1762. According to maritime law, the crew of the Herald was so disturbed by the sight that they left the Octavius adrift in the Arctic waters, where it's said to be still floating to this day. An unsolved mystery, a chilling maritime